We're back at our 2003 Chevy Tahoe with our plug and play remote starter kit. Plug and play remote starter kit will fit 2003 through 2006 full size Chevy, Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon, Denali, Escalade, Trailblazer. It will also fit 2007 classic body style pickups. To lock the doors, we'll push our close lock on a remote. To unlock the doors, push the open lock button on a remote. To start the vehicle, press and hold the button with the key for three seconds. This will trigger remote starting of the vehicle. The vehicle will start and run for 20 minutes. Shut the vehicle off. Press the key button on the remote. In your kit, your remotes may look like this. The functions are identical. The only difference is the arrangement of the buttons. I've also programmed in some bonus features on this remote starter. If you have an OEM remote and you want to use the OEM remote to start the vehicle, you can by locking the doors three times. This will also trigger remote starting of the vehicle. When the vehicle's remote started on a cold winter day, the heated seats will come on automatically as well. We can shut the vehicle off by pushing the close lock button again. Watch it, these plugs can be brittle. Okay, once we unplug the ignition, we want to make an incision in the tape and free it from the pass lock harness. Okay, this is how we want to prep our harness to do our remote starter. Okay, I'm going to show you the product that we're going to use in this 2003 Chevy Tahoe. I'm going to do my plug and play remote starter with a data link interface. Um, you're going to get a remote starter if you buy it from me that looks like this. The only difference is the connectors will be labeled. Um, there's four connections that you'll have to make, as well as plugging in the main ignition harness. Okay, we're going to plug our harness into the vehicle. First thing we're going to do is we're going to plug the vehicle plug into the T-harness and lock it in. Now we're going to take the opposite end and we're going to put it in the ignition plug. Sometimes it can be a little tricky and it's not uncommon to have to jiggle it around to make it go in properly. If you're having trouble plugging in the ignition, you can remove the electrical portion of the switch by putting a screwdriver in and pushing the white tabs on both sides and lightly pulling down. We can remove the electrical portion of the switch, being careful not to turn that mechanism. And now we have the plug in our hand, and we can go ahead and work it and get it to lock in. Okay, now that our plug is locked, we're going to reinstall this ignition switch. Now we have made all of our plug-in connections. Okay, after the ignition switch is plugged in, we're going to route the wires. We're going to put our wires on top of this plastic assembly. 
and wrap a zip tie around. Put our wires on top. And then the other wires that we separated from our ignition wires are going to hang on the bottom. We're going to tighten our zip tie up. And that's what it's going to look like underneath the dash. Now we're going to take this and we're going to fold it backwards. Try to get a better picture here. Even go up into this factory retainer clip. Put our harness wires up in there. Get all this stuff over here up in the back, just like that. Also, wrap a large zip around here to secure our wiring. I'm going to show you the four connections that you'll have to make to complete this installation. Um, we'll start with the horn connection. Horn is optional, but it's a four button remote. I would hook it up. Go on this uh, top plug here, if we count over from this side, we count over one, two, three pins, we have a black wire in the top row, that's the horn wire, already has a tap on it, try to get you better light here, looking right here, now if we're here, on the center plug, the brown plug, we're looking for the parking light wire. Parking light wire is going to be gray with a black stripe. If we count in from this side, this next to this first yellow wire, we go one wire over, we'll have a gray with black. We can verify both of these connections by using a standard test light <laughs> probing. There's our horn. And there's our parking lights. Here's a spot where I like to get the brake. Um, you can also go to the brake pedal. There's a white wire right at the pedal switch. This wire will test positive when you press the brake. You can see my test light. Now I will take a tap our last connection will be at the diagnostic plug of the vehicle down underneath the dash at the diagnostic plug I'm going to locate the violet wire I'm going to also tap the violet wire We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in our connections. First connection we're going to do is the horn connection, which is solid yellow. Connecting our yellow wire to the black wire at the BCM. Next connection is our parking light connection. We're going to connect our white wire to the gray wire with a black stripe at the BCM. We're going to take our brake wire and we're going to connect it to the brake connection that we made on the fuse box side of the dash. We also have an orange wire that we're going to connect to the diagnostic plug. Last connection we have is our ground wire. 
we're going to need a bare chassis ground, bare metal. What we're going to do, sort of ground it here. When we put this vehicle back together, we're going to make sure we ground our ground under this 10 millimeter screw. Nut. I'm going to temporarily ground it for now while we do our programming. From this point on, the remote starter is installed. Um, do not try to test it until we program the iDataLink module. After installation, we need to program our iDataLink DL module. Everything is pre-flashed on the module if you purchase this kit from me. Everything's configured and programmed in the remote starter module to match the iDataLink module and it's locked in data mode so all you have to do to program it is take the OEM key, place it in the ignition and turn the ignition to the on position. Light will be red on the module. We'll crank it over, start the vehicle, the light will go green, the module is now programmed. You can shut the vehicle off. At this point on, we can test our door locks. We're going to lock the vehicle, unlock the vehicle. As you see, we're moving the power seats to its preset position. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move it back. Okay. You can also start the vehicle. Now we're going to push the brake pedal with our hand and shut the vehicle off. For greater reliability, um, we're going to introduce a tack signal to the module. If we have a Duramax diesel, we, we can't do this step. Um, or if we have a Trailblazer with a V8, it will not learn tack through data. To program the tack, we're going to take the program switch on the Crime Stopper remote starter, and we're going to have it accessible. We're going to put the key in, start the vehicle. We're going to press the programming button five times. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to get five honks and five clicks, blinks of the parking lights. Now we're going to go to option one by pressing the program button one time. And then we're going to push and hold the brake pedal until we hear a honk. The tachometer signal has been learned. It's been tacked through data, so we do not have to connect a wire out to the ignition coil for the remote starter to know that the engine is running. If we can't perform this step, if we have the vehicles that I mentioned, we can leave it in tackless mode simply just by not doing this step. I'm going to shut the vehicle off. Now, one of the things that's kind of a bonus with this is we can work the vehicle from our aftermarket remote so we replace our remotes that look like this that are all beat up with new crime stopper remotes we're getting our seat thing so we got to make sure you have your memory seat memory set or it's going to move it's going to move to that position when you unlock the vehicle and to start the vehicle And we can also shut the vehicle off from the remote. Now, if you have a diesel, um, there's no reason to go to the glow plug circuit because we can do a glow plug delay through programming. I may leave the wire, the pink wire, for the glow plug connection if you'd like to make it. It's behind the instrument cluster. You have to remove the cluster and get it there. But uh, we can also do diesel glow plug delay through programming. Another bonus that we will get if we buy this is factory activation of the remote starter with the factory fob. We can lock the doors three times. 
and trigger remote starting of this vehicle. It's pretty cool. Now I activate this feature every time I build one of these kits. 